Yeah, so hello and welcome to the second lecture of uh, group theory. And so as we discussed in the last lecture, uh, our question was uh, where we ended and as discussed in the meeting also, our question was this, S is uh, any non-empty set, right? And then G is the set of all functions from S to S, set of all functions from S, S to itself then we are investigating whether G is a group with any of these operations. Any of these operations uh, where star, we have taken many operations. First we have taken addition, where we define two functions f plus G, addition of two functions f plus G at x equals to fx plus gx. Right? This is how we define for all x in C. For all x in s right and then this was not a group as we have discussed because uh, f is a function from s to s g is also a function from s to s and s is any set so s in s addition may not be defined it is just it could be a set of names of students of your class or set of colors or something so this addition here this one this is fx is in s when we take x here fx is in s when we take x in s gx is uh, again in s so fx plus gx it is addition of two elements of s which may not be well defined s may not have addition defined on it so so this with addition is not a group similarly uh, we have taken subtraction we have taken multiplication and division f upon g and all so none of this uh, was a group not this not this not this because again fx minus gx but what is fx minus gx fx and gx will be elements of s and on s there may not be any subtraction defined s is set of all names or set of all whatever uh, some abstract set on which uh, none of these operations are defined then it cannot be a group because these are elements of S. So I hope that was clear. And then a uh, very Im interesting operation which uh, we considered that was this composition. And uh, for that S can be an arbitrary set. So what we discussed in the meet, uh, many of you had problems with connections. So uh, let us uh, consider this again. So composition uh, GOF at x is defined as uh, g of f of x and similarly f composition g at x equals to f of g of x and both can be defined because the set is same here right f and g both are functions from s to itself so the set is same so g o f also is defined f o g also is defined so it makes sense it does not consider any operation on the set it's just taking s to s another function also taking elements of s to s so uh, the question was whether this is a group or not so let me discuss this again uh, we already done in the meet and if you are if you are if you are cleared about that then you can just fast forward this uh, video so first property uh, closure gof is a function from s to s there's no doubt it's a function from s to s both have same domain and codomain so no need to worry Similarly, f of g also uh, is in g, this set, set of all functions from s to s, g of g o f also is in g. So closure property is verified, associativity also you can verify g composition f uh, composition h equals to uh, at every x, at every x equals to, so this is composition and then g composition f composition h at x for all x in s if we show that for every point in the domain for all x in the domain s these two functions are same then what we have shown is uh, g composition f composition h is same as g composition f composition h so then associativity also is verified 
third was uh, identity identity map we can define from s to s by i of x equals to x for all x in s and then you can verify that uh, this is the identity because uh, i composition f of x equals to i of f of x but i of f of x i of x equals to x for all x so i of f of x equals to again f of x so again f composition i at x equals to f of i of x equals to i of x is nothing but again x so this is f of x so i composition f is f f composition i is i so this is identity now the problem was um, inverse here the problem was actually inverse property because uh, we know functions are invertible whenever they are uh, 1 1 and on 2 so the, that condition is required for any function to be invertible so we can consider some counter example uh, if we consider s to be a particular set uh, let us take a b c here also a b c and we consider the function f uh, which is not 1 1 and on 2 then we show that it does not have inverse let us say a is mapped to c b is mapped to a and c is mapped to again c so as as you can see this function is not 1 1 and on 2 because uh, b is not there in the image so it is not on 2 again it is not 1 1 because uh, as c has two pre image a and c both are mapped to C, so it is many one function, and we show that it has, it does not have inverse. But suppose uh, G is uh, inverse of F. Suppose G is inverse of F, then what should we have? So if uh, G is inverse of F, then we must have uh, G composition F uh, equals to identity, right? That is f inverse composition f equals to identity if g equals to f inverse if such a function exists inverse of x exists then we must have this let us check what is the condition we get so g o f equals to identity this means what so g o f at a equals to i of a but this implies g of f of a equals to i of a is a but then this implies what is f of a? f of a is c. So g of c is a. Right? g of f, suppose g is inverse of f, then g of f is identity. So g of a it should be equal to i of a, which is a. But g of g o f of a is g of f of a. f of a is c. So that means uh, g of c must be equal to a. Okay, let us consider next one. So g o g composition f of uh, b should be equals to i of b uh, which implies g of f of b equals to i of b is b identity function this implies what is f of b f of b is a so g of a is b and similarly g composition f at c equals to i of c this equals to g of uh, f of c equals to c this implies what is f of c f of c is also c so this implies uh, g of c equals to c now there is a problem what is the problem do you see uh, here we get the condition g of c equals to a here we get the condition g of c equals to c and we don't know what is g of b so g of c we don't know what to take a or c so this cannot be a function this is never a function and uh, so such a function does not exist because this is not one one and on two so it its inverse does not exist inverse exists if and only if f is one one and on two so if we don't consider uh, if we just consider set of all functions then with composition there is a problem at the end uh, this uh, closure property is satisfied associativity one can check identity map is the identity but inverse is the problem 
because a function which is not 1 1 and on 2 inverse need not exist right so I hope this is clear so this is not a group actually so G is not a group with any of this uh, operations not even composition so what we need to do is uh, there is a we should find a way out so there is only one problem all these properties are satisfied so what conditions should we add so that uh, this completes the group now composition is working so far with these three properties so there is only one problem that is inverse so when do we get inverse of functions when the functions are 1 1 and 0 2 so naturally we would like to add one condition here if possible can we consider a set of all 1 1 and 0 2 functions then can we form this into a group so let us consider that okay so now uh, instead of g what uh, standard notation we are denoting here is as now our g is as as is what set of all 1 1 and onto functions set of all bijective functions so set of all 1 1 and onto functions from the set S to itself from S to S now uh, we have to check whether A S so G with uh, the operation composition is a group so we have to show this right we have to show that uh, a s with uh, this is composition of functions operation is composition of functions now we have not considered just functions we have considered uh, 1 1 and onto functions so bijective functions we have to show that this is a group so what is the first property first property is uh, closure so what we take we take two functions f and g in a s then uh, f and g are two functions from s to s not only just functions they are bijective functions f is 1 1 and on 2 g is also 1 1 and on 2 so what we have here i am doing just rough work so f uh, from s to s is 1 1 and on 2 and g also from s to s is 1 1 and on to and what we have to show gof belongs to the set as so gof obviously it is a function from s to s so gof is a function from s to s what we have to show it is in as when it is in as if we show that it is 1 1 and on to so now first we show that uh, gof is 1 1 So we, we, we show that GOF is 1 1. So for 1 1 function what we show? So GOF of x equals to GOF of y. So let uh, x y belongs to s such that these two are same. Then what we have to show? x equals to y then GOF is 1 1. So by definition what is this? G of fx equals to g of f of y but now g of z1 is equals to g of z2 but g is given to be 1 1 then what what does it imply f z1 equals to z2 so f of x equals to f of y why because uh, the reason is uh, we know that g is 1 1 right? g of z1 equals to g of z2 because g is 1 1 z1 equals to z2 so z1 is this fx equals to fy and again now f is 1 1 so x equals to y because fx equals to fy and we know that f is a 1 1 function so since f is 1 1 x equals to y so we started with uh, g composition f at x equals to g composition f at y what we got is x equals to y so we have shown that uh, gof is 1 1 so now what we show next is uh, gof is on 2 so once we show this 
then GOF is a 1 1 and 1 2 functions from S to S then uh, we can say that GOF belongs to AS so closure property here these two additional conditions are there so we have to verify in set of all functions uh, we need not check anything but now set of 1 1 and 1 2 functions of course this is a function from S to S but we have to check it is 1 1 as well as on 2 so now we check it is on 2 so let us draw a picture to understand it better so we have s and we have a function f s to s again we have a function g from s to s so then what is uh, g composition f this is g composition f now we want to show that it is on to so what do we do we start with in the codomain so codomain of g composition f we take any point z we want to find some x so that g composition f of x is this z but here we use the fact that g is on to and f is on to so let z belongs to s so this z belongs to s but since uh, g is on to there exists because g is on to if i take z in s there exists uh, y such that g of y equals to z there exists y in s such that g of y equals to z right because g is given to be on to now g of y is again an element of s and f is on to so sorry y is again an element of s so because f is on to there exists x in s so that fx equals to y so because y is in s now we use this so since f is on to there exists x in s such that f of x equals to y now we put this value f of x equals to y put here so instead of y we write f of x so what do we have g of y equals to z this implies so g of y equals to z this implies g of y is nothing but f of x equals to z but this implies g composition f by definition what is g of f of x g composition of f of x equals to z so we have got what we needed because we started with z belongs to s we found some x in s we found some x in s such that uh, g composition f of x equals to z so uh, if f and g both are on to here we use the property that f and g are on to then g o f is on to here we use the property that f and g are one one so g o f is one one so g o f is not only a function from s to s but if f and g are bijective then uh, g o f is also a bijective function so g o f therefore we can say that uh, hence this is only one property eh? closure g o f uh, belongs to a s it is also a function from s to s which is one one and on to similarly uh, we can show that f composition g just like this is also an element of a s so it is closed we take two one one and on two functions their composition is also one one and on two so the set a s is closed under composition now comes uh, the second property that is uh, associativity and that is almost similar so let me show you in the pdf file itself yeah so this is uh, we show that composition is associative so we take three functions f g h in a s now a s is set of all functions from s to s which are one one and on two and we have to show this h composition g composition f is same as h composition g composition f so we take arbitrary x in s and we show that at all such x uh, these two functions are same so h o g o f at x equals to just by definition this is h o g of f x h of g of f x then g of f x is nothing but g o f of x and then uh, h of g o f of x is nothing but h of g o f at x so then for all x these are same so the composition is associative it is it is same 
identity also it is same define a function i from s to s i of x equals to x for all x and f is any function as uh, we have seen in the in the previous example where we did not consider bijective function just functions same way so f composition i of x f of i of x but i of x is x so this is f of x but and that is same as i of f of x which is f of x so identity is just same now uh, we consider inverse so what we have to prove for inverse property so now we show that uh, every element in as has an inverse so we take let f belongs to as uh, we have to find g belongs to as such that uh, g is inverse of f so that means uh, g o f equals to i uh, and this is equals to f composition g we have to find such a g right so uh, how do we define g from f suppose f is given so suppose this is suppose we have f from s to s and and suppose x belongs to s now because f is on to there is y so let x belongs to s since f is on to so there exists uh, y in s such that f of y equals to x yes so if you take x in s there is y in s such that f y equals to x because f is on to and now uh, this y is also unique we cannot have y1 and y2 both are mapped to x y because f of y1 equals to x f of y2 equals to x and then f is 1 1 so we cannot have two points two um, in points going to the same point here x so this is not possible so since f is 1 1 this y is must be unique i hope this is clear since f is 1 1 the pre image of x this y is unique you cannot have two points y1 and y2 going to x under f so this y belongs to s is unique so now we can have a well defined function so we can define g from s to s by uh, now since because f of y equals to x how we define given any x given any x how we define uh, g of x g of x is nothing but uh, g of x equals to y so take start with x use the fact that f is on to and get y here right so that f y equals to x and if you want to define g of x equals to y we must be sure that this y is unique because if there are two points then what should we take g of x equals to y1 or g of x equals to y2 but this is not possible because f is 1 1 so this y also is unique such so that f of y equals to x otherwise if there are two points y1 and y2 both are going to same point x uh, then f is not 1 1 so this y is unique and therefore this unique y we can define image of g under uh, sorry image of x under g so g of x equals to y we can define now we can verify so now uh, we can verify g is inverse of x so g o f right what is g o f of y so this is g of f of y and f of y is x so so g this is g of x and g of x is y so g o f of y equals to x and similarly f composition g at x equals to f of g of x equals to g of x is y so this is f of y but f of y is again is x so g composition f at y equals to y f composition g at x equals to x so uh, this is nothing but i of y this is nothing but i of x so this implies g composition f equals to i equals to f composition g 
So now this is how we define function from S to S. What what remains to show is this. Still, what we have to show is uh, g is a only function from S to S. What we have to show g belongs to A S. That means g is one one and on two. So this I leave as exercise. Use the fact. This we have already shown this. Show that uh, and also f is one one and on two. So show that g is one one and on two. So this implies g is inverse of f. So g is inverse of f. But what we have to still show is uh, g belongs to A S. So it is one one and on two. This I leave as exercise to you. If uh, you have any difficulty, we can discuss in the next class. So now finally, what we have shown is um, A S. Set of all one one and on two functions from any non-empty set S to S with composition is a group, right? Okay. So okay. So now we go to the uh, next question regarding this. Uh, first question is uh, first. Let us state a remark. If S is finite. If S is a finite set, then A S is also finite, right? If uh, the set itself is finite, how many one one and on two functions can we have from S to S? That is also finitely many. But now the question is, what about the cardinality? So suppose cardinality of uh, let us consider first point and uh, cardinality of S equals to let us say one. S is just singleton set. S is just uh, singleton. Let me write uh, singleton one. So how many functions are there from S to S? So one maps to one. This is only one function f one. So what is A S? A S is uh, just singleton f one. So what is the cardinality of A S? Cardinality of A S is one. If the set has only one element, then there is only one function possible. That element maps to itself. That is nothing but identity function. So cardinality of A S is uh, again one. Now what about if cardinality of S equals to two? Suppose S has two elements. One two. Or A B, or whatever, take any two elements. Right? Then how many functions are possible? So f one, one two. So one possibility is one maps to one, and two maps to two. This is identity function. One one and on two function. Remember, we cannot take one maps to one and two maps to one. We are considering one one and on two function. So both has to be there in the image. And another possibility, uh, one. So one maps to here one maps to one. So now consider one maps to two. Two maps to two we cannot consider because we want one one and on two functions. So two maps to one. This is another possibility. So only two functions are possible. There is no third possibility. One maps to one. Two maps to two. That is identity. And another possibility is one maps to two. Two maps to one. So that is uh, so A S. In this case, uh, we'll have two functions f one, f two. F one is identity. F two is another function. Uh, which interchanges one and two. So, what is the cardinality of A S? Cardinality of A S is uh, two here in this case. If set has two elements, then uh, set of all the functions one one and on two functions from S to S. There are also two functions. Now, this is exercise. Think about this. Try to list. What if S equals to three? If s equals to three, then what is the cardinality of a s? Try to find. I'll give you one example, one function I can give you easily. Rest of all you can compute. One, two, three. Suppose s has three elements. One, two, three. Then image of one is one, image of two is two, image of three is three. This is one function identity. Similarly, find other functions. How many such functions can you get? So this is one exercise. Similarly, when you find this, try to find out what about if s equals to four. What about uh, a s in this case? 
cardinality of as how many such functions can be there will it be 3 in this case will it be 4 in this case how many if s equals to 5 what is cardinality of as and in general if uh, cardinality of s equals to n then what is the cardinality how many functions can be there which are 1 1 and 1 2 functions from s to s how many so based on this cardinality of s so this is uh, one exercise so let me write here you can pause the video understand what is asked and then solve this exercise very easy right so then another next question related to this same yeah so we know that uh, group is abelian when g is abelian g is said to be group is said to be abelian if uh, a b a dot b equals to b dot a for all a b not some they should commute right a b equals to b a for all a b in g then g is said to be abelian now the question is whether a s is abelian or not composition whether it is abelian and when it is abelian so let's let us just before i give you exercise let us just take some case so first we have taken first case cardinality of s equals to 1 and uh, s has only one element let us take a and then how many functions are possible f1 only one function which maps a to a so only one function so a s equals to 1 a s equals to uh, f1 and so cardinality of a s only one function is possible so there is no question about a billion this is a billion yes it is a billion now consider the case s equals to 2 so cardinality of s equals to 2 so s has two elements let us or oh, last uh, in the last example i have taken one two anyway it does not matter just two elements you write either a or b or one or two so it does not matter so how many functions are there f1 is an one function which maps a to a and b to b and uh, there is another function which maps uh, a to b and b to a right only two functions are possible so cardinality of as in this case it is two there are two functions which are 1 1 and 1 2 and let us check whether this is abelian or not so what we have to check we have to check f1 composition f2 equals to f2 composition f1 we have to check this but anyway this is identity so uh, this will be true in this case because f1 composition f2 at a equals to f1 of f2a but what is uh, f2a f2a is b a is mapped to b by f2 so f1 of b what is f1 of b f1 of b is b so one side we have this and another side uh, here we have taken f1 composition f2 we take f2 composition f1 there's no need to check because this is identity when we take composition with identity it is uh, anyway it is same but uh, just I am writing to demonstrate how you are going to check in the next case. So f1, f2 composition f1 at uh, a equals to f2 of uh, f1a, f1a is a, so this is f2a, f2a is b, this is b. So here also value at a equals to b, here also value at a equals to b. And similarly, f1 composition f2 at b equals to f1 f2b, f2b is a, so f1a, and this is a. And similarly, f2 composition f1 at b equals to f2 f1b, f1b is identity only, so it is b only, and f2b is nothing but a so here also these two are equal so we have this is correct so this is abelian group uh, if uh, cardinality of uh, as is one a uh, cardinality of s is one 
coordinate of S is 2, then also it is abelian group. Now what happens when the cardinality of S equals to 3, whether A S is abelian? This is the question. If first of all you have to solve this exercise, what is the cardinality of A S? How many functions are there? One is the identity function and then how many other functions are there? And then check whether uh, composition like this, whether they are you are getting equal or not. What if cardinality of um, S equals to 4? Then uh, what about AS? Can we say that it is abelian and so on? So this is the second exercise. Uh, try to observe what happens and then try to prove in general whatever uh, the case is, whatever your observation is. We will discuss in the next uh, uh, meet. Okay, so now let us take a particular uh, case. Uh, suppose s equals to x1, x2, xn. Suppose there are n elements in s and uh, consider theta belongs to as. So now what is theta? Theta is a 1, 1 function, 1, 1 and 1, 2 function from s to s. So how will theta look like? So theta of uh, x1. What will be theta of x1? It will be one of this, exactly one of this. So it may be x1, it may be x2, xn, anything, x3. We don't know. So let us call it xi1. Then theta of x2. What is theta of x2? Theta of x2 will be one of this, but it cannot be xi1 because theta is in as, 1, 1 and on to function. Theta of x1 is xi1, theta of x2 cannot be same. So it is different. Let us call it xi2 and so on. So theta of xn, let us call it xin. Yes, remember all these are different. xi1, xi2, xin, all these are different because there are n elements here. 1, 1, 1, 2 function, that means n different elements are there in the image. Otherwise, if two are same, then it is not one one, right? So, if such a function is there, that is uh, theta. In general, we can write theta of uh, x k is x i k, where k equals to one two n. So, if such an element is there, then we call theta as this is definition. We call theta as uh, sorry. We call theta as permutation. Why it is permutation? Because what is permutation? It is just changing of elements. It maps x1 to one of this. It maps x2 to one of this and so on. It maps xn to one of this. That means it changes the position of this mapping. So theta is a permutation and theta can be written as, uh, we can write like this, x1, x2 and so on. We have xn. So x1, x1 where it is mapped? It is mapped to theta of x1, x2 is mapped to theta of x2 and xn is mapped to theta xn. So it is just a permutation which is nothing but uh, x1. What is theta of x1? Theta of x1 is xi1. Sorry, theta of x1 is xi1 then x2, x2 is mapped to theta of x2 which is xi2 and so on. xn is mapped to theta of xn which is xin right so this is how a permutation look like so actually permutation is not uh, is it is nothing but it is just one one and on to function from the set of n elements to itself so just these are all x1 x2 xn but the order may be changed x1 may be mapped to x2 x2 may be mapped to x5 and so on so order may be changed so this is just that is why it is called a permutation so theta is called permutation. So in particular if uh, s equals to instead of x1 x2 xn let us take 1 2 3 and so on let us take 1 2 n instead of general elements like x1 x2 xn let us take s equals to 1 2 n. Then we write theta how do we write theta? Theta we write as uh, theta of 1 is theta of 1 2 key image theta 2 then 3 is mapped to theta 3 and so on n is mapped to theta n. So permutation will look like this 
and uh, if this is the case then AS there is a notation which we use is SN standard notation permutation group you must have studied this in BSE so in uh, what is AS AS is the permutation group uh, we call when S equals to 1 to n it is nothing but we denote by Sn right Sn and uh, Hustin if you know Hustin writes like this Hustin writes k theta but for us this is nothing but uh, we write like this theta of k but sometimes we also denote uh, the book notation it is like this Hustin as you also know in linear algebra it, it the book mentions x plus y t but for us it is nothing but we write t of x plus y it always applies uh, the argument on the left side and operator on the right side Hurstein mentions like this tx we always write t of x or we write uh, tx we do not write uh, like this but sometimes we also use uh, such a notation right So in this notation, sometimes uh, we write this element like this also. So 1, 2 and up to n. So the image is uh, theta of 1 but Hurstein likes writes argument on the on the left. So 1 theta, 2 theta so that is nothing but theta of 2 and so on. This is n theta. So this is a standard notation. So I know you can pause this and again go back and repeat but let me summarize. So what is a AS set of all 1 1 on 2 functions from S to S. So we have just seen that this is group. Now S is suppose set of n elements. Then theta belongs to AS so it is a function. So it will look like something like this x1 is mapped to one of this xi1 and so on. So it is just uh, interchanging this x1 is mapped to one of this x2 is mapped to one of this interchanging so theta is nothing but it's a permutation so we write like this x1 goes to theta x1 x2 goes to theta of x2 its image xn goes to theta xn which is nothing but x1 goes to xi1 xi2 and so on so in particular in instead of x1 to xn if we write 1 to n then this as has a special notation if we write 1 to n this is nothing but sn it's again set of all 1 1 on 2 functions from this particular set n elements 1 to n to itself so we write 1 goes to just like this theta 1 2 goes to theta 2 and so on but the Hurstein notation sometimes we use that also uh, instead of theta of k they write uh, on the left hand side the uh, argument and the operator is on the right hand side so we sometimes write like this also right and now this is a group so how multiplication is defined if we consider such functions such permutations n elements then how multiplication is defined let us consider that so if we consider uh, let us take sig uh, theta and sigma so n belongs to n and theta and sigma there are two functions in sn sn is here nothing but it is nothing but as only but but where s is what 1 2 up to n so when when we take s is this as uh, is uh, we have special notation for as that is sn so we have now two functions sig uh, theta and sigma so how do we define theta sigma theta sigma theta sigma we write like this theta sigma is 1 goes to uh, sigma theta 1 2 goes to sigma theta and so on n goes to sigma theta n yes so this is uh, our notation multiplication uh, see here this is theta sigma here this is sigma o theta so that means what we are writing that is uh, theta sigma equals to sigma composition theta so this is the notation for composition of two functions so sigma composition theta we write theta sigma the reason is this so if uh, if you want to evaluate at one what is sigma composition theta at one so this is nothing but first theta is applied right first theta is applied theta of one we check 
and then we check what is sigma so first theta is applied theta of 1 and then we we check where sigma takes theta of 1 so but we write this notation because it is convenient for example uh, so let us take an example n equals to 4 and theta equals to let us take 1 1 2 3 4 and uh, here we take 2 3 1 4 so this is our theta this is sigma let us take sigma equals to 1 2 3 4 that is map to uh, 2 1 4 3 and now let us compute uh, theta sigma so theta sigma if i write like this i again repeat whatever is written in the above and sigma so this is my theta this one and this is sigma 1 2 3 4 that is map to 2 1 4 3 so this is sigma so now uh, this is theta sigma how do we compute this 1 2 3 4 pay attention here we'll discuss this in class also again and uh, on the other hand how do we compute uh, this so let us compute sigma composition theta of 1 this is nothing but first theta is applied so sigma of theta of 1 what is theta of 1 theta of 1 is 2 so this is nothing but sigma of 2 and what is sigma of 2 sigma of 2 is 1 sigma of 2 is 1 so did you realize what we do we applied theta first so theta of 1 so left hand side element we are checking theta of 1 equals to 2 then we are coming to right hand side what is sigma of 2 sigma of 2 is 1 that is why we have written here theta sigma so it is easier to multiply 1 goes to 2 then come here 2 goes to 1 so 1 goes to 1 so sigma composition theta of 1 is nothing but 1 similarly again sigma composition theta of 2 this is first theta is applied because first theta is applied we are reading here theta first so we have kept theta on the left hand side when we write in this notation but when we use composition notation of the function theta is on the right hand side because theta is applied first but we have we always read from left to right so we have written theta here on the left hand side but it is nothing but this operation which is composition where we write theta here so first we apply theta on 2 what is applied theta of 2 and theta of 2 then sigma is checked so what is theta of 2 so sigma of uh, theta of 2 2 is mapped to 3 so this is 3 and then we check sigma of 3 so sigma of 3 is 4 so this is 4 right first theta applied theta of 2 we have checked this is 3 and then when sig where sigma maps 3 it, it maps 3 to 4 this is how we read 2 goes to 3 first theta is uh, applied so theta we have written on left hand side so we read from left to right 2 goes to 3 and 3 goes to 4 so 2 goes to 4 so so image of 2 is nothing but 4 so i hope this is clear and uh, you also try it uh, by pausing this video whether you get correct or not so uh, now what is the image of sigma composition theta sigma composition theta is nothing but theta sigma of 3 so sigma so let us first now do this theta sigma so 3 3 goes to 1 by theta and then 1 goes to 2 so this now let us check here so theta of 3 that is sigma of what is theta of 3 3 goes to 1 so that is sigma of 1 and what is sigma of 1 sigma of 1 is 2 so sigma composition theta 3 is 2 so theta sigma of 3 is nothing but 2 similarly sigma composition theta of 4 sigma composition theta is read as sigma theta so let us check here first 4 goes to 4 and this 4 here 4 goes to 3 so here 4 goes to 3 so this is sig theta is applied first so th sigma of theta of 4 but what is theta of 4 theta of 4 is 4 theta we read first so we write in this notation we write theta on the left hand side but actually composition theta is applied first so theta is in th in this side so theta of 4 is 4 so this is 4 and what is sigma of 4 sigma of 4 is nothing but 3 so this is 3 
So 1, 4, 2, 3, 1, 4, 2, 3, all these 4 are distinct. So this is 1, 1 function. No two entries are same. Here also 1, 2, 3, 4. Here also all 4 are distinct. So this is one example. You can uh, create such an example. Take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Take two functions. Uh, take uh, the composition. And yeah, whether there was first exercise or second exercise, whether this is abelian or not. So it is a nice exercise to now check what is, uh, on the other hand, what is? Uh, sigma theta so sigma theta what you will do you will write sigma first and then you will write theta then then compute and here also this way also you can check uh, sigma theta will be nothing but theta composition sigma first sigma is applied uh, whatever x is there sigma so first theta of so sigma is applied sigma of x and then sigma of x we check uh, is image under theta what is there so first sigma is applied because so we write sigma on the left side and we read from left to right just write like this and check and so here you will be able to check whether this is same or not theta sigma whether it is same or same as uh, sigma theta or not what is theta sigma so that is so theta sigma is nothing but sigma composition theta whether this is same as uh, uh, sigma theta is nothing but theta composition sigma right so whether this composition is uh, uh, commut commutative or not so whether a as is commutative group or not another example i think you can easily find out uh, in this context so i think uh, we stop here do compute one of uh, one more example of this method and then we'll discuss all these things uh, in the next class whatever is left as exercise uh, you try to solve and then we'll discuss what uh, we have discussed so far in the next meet if you find it too easy you want to skip meet it is fine so no problem but you will have uh, one day uh, be, uh, before uh, this video will be posted before the actual meet so uh, do uh, all this exercise and then see you in the meet thank you